Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at standard form calculations. This is all about taking standard form, multiplying them, dividing them, adding them together. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this particular video we're looking at standard form calculations. This is something that's roughly about grade 3, grade 4 on a GCSE maths paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions. You can also visit the 3 Minute Maths website and download this particular worksheet by following the link below in the description. Okay, so right, 76,000 in standard form. Well, all standard form does is it tells you how many places the decimal point has moved. So currently it's at the end here. So if I want to make it standard form, I move it once, twice, three, four times because the first number needs to be between one and nine. So we would write that as 7.6 times 10 to the power of four. And that would be the answer to that question. OK, and it's a similar thing with uh, question number two, three times 10 to the power of minus five. So actually, in that particular um, instance, we've got three and the decimal point currently is there and we're going to move it minus five. So it's actually going to go in this direction. So once, twice, three, four, five times, it's going to end up there. Now, in order to keep that place, we put a few zeros just to make sure that it keeps the place. So the answer to this particular question would be 0 0.00003. OK, so one of the things I would just suggest is that when you're doing this as an exam, you would need to make sure that you do make your decimal point very obvious. OK, let's move on to question number three. So it says write 860 times 10 to the 4 in standard form. Well, in standard form, as I mentioned before, the first number needs to be between 1 and 9. So it's absolutely fine for this one at the top here, 1 and 9, 7. Now, in this particular case, um, it is written in standard form because three is between one and nine. So we do exactly the same with this. And we say, actually, it should be eight point six. But in this particular case now, in order for us to do that, we move it once, twice, in order to get it to the end of the zero and then an extra four places on top of that. So we're moving the decimal point um, four places. So it would be 8.6 plus another two places. So it'd be times 10 to the power of six. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Um, it might be a little bit confusing as extra zero. So I'm just going to write that for you as 8.6 times 10 to the power of 6. OK, all right, so we've moved six places. Let's look at number four. Uh, write 7 times 10 to the power of 6 as an ordinary number. Well, again, it's going to be six jumps. So I've got seven. Here's the decimal point, and I'm going to move it another six places. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to pop it there. OK, so that's going to be zero, 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 zero. So it's actually going to be seven followed by six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, so hopefully that's all right. Let's move on now to question number five. Now, question number five, I've seen a couple of times on a few uh, GCSE type papers. So it is well worthwhile getting to grips with this type of question. This is probably one of the more challenging questions on this particular paper. And what I'd suggest you do is you look at each of these numbers and write them out in their full form. So three times 10 to the power of eight is simply three with eight zeros. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight zeros after it. OK, 32 times 10 to the power of six. Well, it's 32 with six zeros after it. So three, two, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's have a look at 0 0.034. Well, in order to make that a real number or the number we've got, we can actually move the decimal point one, two, three places to get to 34, but we're actually gonna move it 10 places in total. So we need 34 and then another seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then lastly, 3,400 times 10 to the 4, well, that's going to be 3,400, and it's going to have another four zeros, one, two, three, four afterwards. Okay, so it's going to be quite tricky, I think, to actually try to put those in some sort of order, and really the whole idea of having standard form is that it is theoretically you're able to make things a little bit easier, particularly without having to write lots and lots of zeros. But what we need to do is we need to compare the numbers and we need to figure out a way of doing that. Now, if I look at 32 million here, I've actually got six zeros afterwards. And in all the other numbers, I've got six or more than six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that six zeros as being my standard. And I'm going to say, actually, if I cross out those six zeros, what I get here is 32. OK, let's have a look at crossing out six zeros from this one. If you remember, it's got eight. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to cross out those six and I end up with 300. OK, and it doesn't matter if you do it like this. Just show the examiner what it is you're doing is perfectly fine. Let's have a look at this one. Then I'm going to cross out six, three, four, five, six. OK, there it goes. That's going to be 340. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be 34. So now hopefully you can see that the smallest number here by comparison is going to be 32. So actually I can now put myself in a position where I write down all of the numbers that I actually want. And the first number that I'm going to write down is 32 times 10 to the 6. That's the smallest number. It's this one here. The next one I'm going to write out is going to be this one. Okay. 34. Now they will want you to write this out in the original format that it came in. Now it's not ideal because it's a little bit confusing and it's not standard form anyway, but this is what I think these sort of questions drive at, is this ability to be able to kind of compare numbers. So let's have a look at the next one. It's 300 and then the very last one will be 340. So 300 is 3 times 10 to the 8. And then the very last one is 0 0.034 times 10 to the 10. OK, and that would be all of those numbers in order. OK, let's move on then to question number six. It is uh, so far seven minutes into the video. What I'm going to try to do is keep this video, um, oh, I don't know, to roughly about, let's say, 10, 12 minutes, something like that. And it should give you a reasonably good kind of go at these things. All right, good bit of revision for you. So work out the value of six times 10 to the seven times five times. Seven. Now this will be a non-calculator question. So what you would do with this is you would actually work out the value of um, the two integers multiply together and then the value of the standard form. So 10 to the seven, times 10 to the 3. OK, so if you write it like that, just makes your life a bit easier because then you can say 6 times 5 is 30 and the standard form of it is going to be 10 to the 10 because what we do is we add those indices together. Now, this would typically be a two mark question, maybe three, but two marks. This would give you one mark because it's not yet in standard form. As I mentioned before, we need to make the first number between one and nine. At the moment it's 30, change it to three and move the decimal point one place. So that's going to be three times 10 to the power of 11. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Let's move on then to the second uh, part of this uh, particular playlist where we're going to be looking at these questions. So 
Okay, so let's move on then to question number seven. Work out the value of three times 10 to the six times four times 10 to the minus four. Okay, we're gonna use exactly the same principle as we did in question number six. And what we do is we take the actual calculation part away from the standard form part. Okay, so hopefully you can read my writing. As always, please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions and compare your solutions. So what we've got is three times four is gonna be 12. And then that's gonna be multiplied by the standard form. Now we are multiplying together, so we're gonna add the indices. So we've got six plus minus four. Well, a plus and a minus together is gonna be a minus. So it becomes six minus four, which is 10 to the power of two. Okay, now usually these are two mark questions, something like that. You would get one mark for this so far because it needs to be written in standard form. And as I've mentioned before, the first number needs to be between one and nine. So it becomes 1.2 and I've moved the decimal point one more place. So it's 1.2 times 10 to the power of three. If you wanted to write that out, and it depends on the question wording, you could write that out as an actual calculation of 1,200 as an actual whole number if you wanted to. And that's perfectly fine. Depends on the type of question you've got. OK, so question number eight, we're going to use a very similar format in that we're actually going to do the division separately to the standard form. But this time it's 1.04 divided by 2 and the standard standard form of it is 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the power of minus 5. Okay, so 1.04 divided by 2 is going to give us 0 0.52 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. Now it's a division, so we're going to subtract the indices. But you've got to be careful because you've got a negative 5 here. So it would be 3 minus minus 5, two minuses together, become an add. So it's 0 0.52 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, again, two or three mark question. I'm not quite sure. It depends on the board. Not quite in standard form. You need to put the first number between 1 and 9. And bearing in mind now, we've moved the decimal point back one place. So it'd be 5.2 times 10 to the power of 7. Okay, just incidentally, it crosses my mind, these would be non-calculator questions. You wouldn't be using a calculator with these. Okay, it would be on the non-calculator paper. All right, let's have a look at number 9. We're coming to the end of the video now. Work out the value of um, 16 times 10 to the 6 divided by 8 times 10 to the minus 12. Going to use exactly the same principle in that the calculation is 16 divided by 8. And the standard form part of it is 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the power of minus 12. OK, so 16 divided by 8. Fairly straightforward, that's going to be 2. And that's great because the number is between 1 and 9. So it looks like this one's going to be relatively straightforward. Um, 10 to the power of 6 minus or 6 minus minus 12, two minuses together. We're going to add them. So it becomes 10 to the power of 18. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, final one, a little bit trickier, but it would be, again, a non-calculator. But we're going to apply the same principle. We're going to say 3.5 divided by 2.5. And the standard form part of it is going to be 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the power of minus 9. OK, so looks a little bit awkward, but let's see what happens. So 3.5 divided by 2.5. Well, I would always write that as a fraction. OK, now the reason I write it as a fraction is it's much, much easier than to hopefully calculate because you can see then if I multiply top and bottom by uh, 10, I've got 35 over 25. Well, that reduces to 7 over 5, which also as a decimal, which is what we're looking for, is going to be 1.4. OK, so hopefully you're all right with that process. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but really that's one of the things that you need to have in your, in your toolbox ready to, ready to use. The standard form part of it is not too bad. So again, it's a division. So again, we are minusing. We've got two minuses together become a plus. So it's going to be 10 to the 3 plus 10 to the 9 is going to be 10 
to the 12. And actually, that's the answer to that question. So you hopefully wouldn't need a calculator for that. I hope this whole video has been useful to you. It has gone on for a little while. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're actually going to look at standard form word problems. So a little bit, taking this a little bit further. And I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video.